being able to process the audio playing on your Android device before it reaches the speakers or your earbuds can be important to a lot of people. I know Viper for Android used to be a very popular choice for those with root access, but it has not been updated in years and with most folks no longer rooting their devices, it's left people looking for alternatives. Wavelet is an app that I've seen people using lately, but it still has its own limitations. So today, I want to show you an application called Rootless James DSP. I can walk you through how to set the app up with the help of Shizuku, and then we'll go over a few of the audio processing effects that it enables. If you aren't a fan of Shizuku, then you can use the manual ADB method for granting the app the correct permissions. So I'll leave that up to you if it's the method that you want to go with. As mentioned, in order for this audio signal processor to work, we first need to have Shizuku up and running. If this is not something you're familiar with, then that's completely understandable. I actually already have a dedicated guide here on the channel that will walk you through the entire process. So in an attempt to prevent this video from being longer than it needs to be, I'll have that guide linked in the video description below. And you will be able to find that link in the pinned comment here as well, so that it's easy for everyone to find. With Shizuku installed and the service up and running in the background, then we can turn to installing the Rootless James DSP application. It can be installed for free via the Google Play Store. So I'll have this linked down below as well. But you can also grab it from the project's official GitHub page. The app is hosted by a developer named Tin Schneeb. And it can be also downloaded from FDroid as well. With Rootless James DSP installed, go ahead and open it up. And you're going to be greeted with an onboarding process. So we're going to go through, read all about its limitations, and you'll be greeted with this setup method. So as mentioned, we can go with Shizuku if we want, which we will, since it's much easier as we already have the service up and running. Or you could select ADB and then execute your ADB permission command from your laptop or desktop PC. The app will check to make sure it's installed, make sure it's active, and then you can tap Grant Access. Now we have a look at the permissions that are required for the app to work. We're going to tap on Next, Grant the required permissions, and now we're told that the app is set up. So we tap on finish. You'll see a notice here talking about needing to enable a feature within the developer options menu. So close that out, find your hidden developer options menu, scroll down to the apps section, and then look for a feature labeled disable screen share protections. This will be off by default, but we can turn it on, which means it's going to disable those protections with a simple tap. With that done, Rootless James DSP is set up and ready to go. All you have to do is tap the power button at the bottom of the app here, and you'll know it's active and working properly by the red icon up here in the status bar. Remember, capturing your audio stream is how this app works without root access. So Android is going to make it seem like your audio stream is being recorded, but it's just being piped through the Rootless James DSP application. Android goes through a lot of work to prevent malicious apps from listening to or modifying your audio stream but we know what the Rootless James DSP app is doing, and we installed the app ourselves. 
You can even read through the source code and compile the APK file yourself if you're really suspicious about what is installed from the Google Play Store. Now, with the app installed, set up properly, and running in the background, let's begin playing a song in YouTube Music to test it out. So with the song playing, let's switch back over to James DSP and look at some of the effects that we have. There are a lot of different settings and effects that we can go through here, but you get the idea. The app gives you a wide range of effects that you can apply to your music so that it sounds exactly how you want it to. Since this application does not require root access, it does come with some limitations. For example, Rootless James DSP will not work with any app that blocks internal audio capture. This includes Spotify, Chrome, and a few other popular music applications out there. These apps implement a protection because they don't want people recording the audio streaming from their service, which is understandable, I guess. This application is also not going to work in conjunction with other audio processing apps. This includes Wavelet and any others that make use of the Dynamics Processing Android API. And lastly, the developer wants you to know that processing your music with this app will add some audio latency to it. The audio stream is being piped through multiple layers in order to get processed with Rootless James DSP. So it makes sense that there's going to be some extra latency along the way. Whether or not that latency is an issue to you will depend on what you're doing with it. If it's just being used for music that you want to listen to, then you're probably not going to notice anything at all. But if you're trying to make music with the audio being processed in this way, then you are likely to hear the latency that it adds to it. With that said, we've seen Rootless James DSP working with a number of popular audio apps, including YouTube, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, Power Amp, Twitch, Apple Music, and more. We have seen some folks getting Spotify to work with this setup, but it requires a patch from another application in order to remove that limitation that I mentioned earlier. I won't go over that today, 
but if you do enough research, then you are bound to find some instructions online. Personally, I have never been the type who can actually hear the difference between a good sounding audio system and a great one. So most of these effects are likely not going to be useful to me. But still, there are some great features packed into this little Android application that can go a long way to enhancing the audio quality from your Android smartphone or tablet. So definitely give it a try and share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I appreciate each and every one of you who have stuck with me to the end of this guide. It really means a lot when I see so many of you are sticking with me through all of these videos. And please, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already.